What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fire Builders Live. My name is Josh Corporal. Like always, I am streaming live from Key West, Florida, from the porch. Welcome, one and all. Uh, today, we have got a great show. I got Darren Virsami on the line. Darren, it's so good to have you here. Welcome to Fire Builders Live, man. Josh, it's so awesome to be here. I thoroughly enjoyed our chat uh, previously. I'm so fired up. I'm, I'm really excited to be able to share this journey as well. Same here, man. Ever since like when we talked for that very first time and you told me what you're doing and where you're doing it, I was like, oh my God, dude, we need to have you on the show. We need to talk about this. Uh, so uh, before we start, let me explain to everybody listening, watching at home, uh, what we do on Fire Builders Live. See, we stream live twice a week, Wednesdays, Fridays. We bring on these amazing guests like Darren and we take these big ideas, these big goals, we break them down into small steps, things that you can do consistently every single day to improve. Today is no different. Let me tell you a little bit about Darren and the kinds of things that he has done. It is incredibly impressive. The man is someone who loves people, music, nature. He hosts two podcasts, Leading Strong and The Nature Advantage. And in 2013, he co-founded the company 34 Strong, which is a team that is creating the best workplaces across the United States. And itself is a 2021 Inc.com best workplace. 34 Strong has an incredible client list that includes people you might have heard of before, the FDA, Bank of America, the entire state of California, numerous others. The guy knows a lot about creating functional and harmonious workplaces. But for Darren, it is not all business. He is also the chief script flipper for the Flip the Script family vlog that he and his family started in 2021 by moving to Barbados and recording the entire journey. Because when families travel together, they experience this unique type of bonding, right? It has enormous event benefits for the entire family, but it also has enormous benefits for you as an individual. Building self-confidence, breaking yourself out of patterns, limiting beliefs, etc. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So Darren, again, dude, so impressive. I love what you're doing. Welcome again to Fire Builders Live. Josh, again, thank you. Uh, that's, that, that is just very, very exciting to, um, to just be a part of this. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to, to be here. So thanks for the honor of uh, being on your show. You're absolutely welcome, man. And by the way, if I have to mute myself sometimes, it is because of two reasons. I know that you can hear the roosters in the background. Elvis is going nutso right now. I think he senses his brethren on the other side of the world right now. Uh, but two, it's incredibly windy. I don't know how it is in Barbados right now, but now in Key West, it's just, it's gusty, man. It wasn't terribly windy. There's there's a couple, I'm looking out the window now. There's there's a little bit of gust going on there. We, we got a little family swim in this morning and it wasn't... Uh, wasn't too bad out there yet, but definitely I know what that's like when it starts hitting in the tropics. It's uh, it's a force to be reckoned with, to say the least. It definitely is. I uh, I love it, though. I love the feeling. Uh, and by the way, let me pull this up because uh, Hillary got one of my favorite humans on the planet. Uh, Hillary says two of my favorite humans. She's actually the one that introduced us. So, Hillary, you're the, right. essentially the one that made this whole thing possible. That's right, Hillary. It's great to see you. Great to see you, and thanks for introducing us. Absolutely. Dude, okay. Well, so let's get started. Uh, I like to start the show off by asking, I mean, I kind of alluded to it already, but by asking, so where exactly are you in the world? And now that you are there, what's a typical day like in Darren's life? Yeah, so I am residing in Barbados right now. We relocated our whole family in uh, actually on New Year's Eve uh, 2020. We flew away from all that we had known in California, departed a flight from San Francisco uh, to New York uh, on a red eye, slept on that flight, and then made our way on down here to Barbados and quarantined for eight days. Uh, as we were going through, but this is where we are residing now. This was actually a decision that our family, we've called ourselves the Flip the Script family, a decision that we made back in 2019. Um, in just in 
the kids were at a young enough age to make some serious transitions or, or at a young enough age were making a transition like that. They weren't too heavily rooted in the, in the certain activities. 2020 hit, and frankly, that made it a little bit easier uh, as well because everything was, was virtual, including um, my business, right? My, my work that I do within 34 Strong. So that's where I'm at. We're, we're in the Eastern Caribbean Sea uh, or in the Atlantic, actually. Um, that, that, that's where we're at. A typical day for me, I, I still love to wake up early, even though a lot of my clients and my team is on the West Coast of California that we work with. I still really enjoy protecting my mornings and I, I've actually been enjoying the experience being ahead in time. Josh, you might be able to relate when you're working with folks that are on the West Coast yeah. of the United States. Um, one of the things that I, I, I really enjoy doing is get up early. I go through the whole you know routine of making sure I have lots of water first, literally first thing in the morning, get up, just get get hydrated on the water stuff. But then I spend a little time doing a little, little bit of stretching, exercise, meditation, um, and I'm a martial artist, so I actually do katas in the morning, just forms, and it's a great way to get my body moving, waking up my mind and all that, getting some blood flow and oxygen before I do anything. So, so, before, really so before, before you go any further, so if anybody doesn't know actually what a kata is, can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's like a form that you you would do. So you're working at different sequences of forms that you you would do in martial arts. So it's different techniques. You 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 kind of work work through them. That that's a really simple way of putting it. So anyhow, fast forward through that. I take a little time. I love to just make sure I read a little bit in the morning as well and journal. And then then the family starts getting up. And one of the things that has become a family ritual is we we do some form of family exercise, right? And that's usually by about right before eight o'clock in the morning where we're, we're getting everybody out the door if we're going down to the water for a swim or a snorkel in the morning. Or sometimes we'll just say, ah, we're good on the water for right now. We're gonna just take a walk. There's some beautiful areas to take a walk. But that process, Josh, of just being outside, first thing to start your day, getting a little family exercise together, that's just been amazing for the human connection, I think I'm quoting the right chemical that you get flowing, is the oxytocin amongst us and that sense of community and connection uh, that we get flowing. So come back from that and then I really jump into my day at that point. A lot of times actually before we get out, I would have also gone through after journaling and I'll get caught up on some key emails or different things like that, just mapping out my day with what are my, what are my three things that I want to accomplish today that'll make me feel like I'm thriving. So if there's stuff I need to just knock out some prep for, I usually get that done in the quiet of the morning before everybody's up and then take a break from that, get out for a little bit more exercise and then jump back into the day. Um, and, and, and that's, that's where the focus is. And then jump into a lot of stuff with 34 strong or different interviews that I'm doing for, um, for the podcast or for my own show, nature advantage prepping for a TEDx talk right now also. Nice, nice, so that, dude. That's all coming up um, also. Yeah, and then and then just making sure that we, you know, in the evenings, my day sometimes can be a little crazy uh, with all that we're running at. One of the things that I can say, Josh, is just try to make sure that by the time I get into evening, we, we, we really, in coming here, and just the way that the environment is and, and, and different elements, there's a lot of value placed on the family time and in kind of going through that. So most days a week, sometimes I have some late meetings with my team with 34 strong, but for the most part, we try to protect the the, the dinner hour together and, and, and doing some things and then playing the music and all that. Then I'll, yes. we'll sneak a little music time. So not every day, but sometimes with the kids. What do you play? I play bass actually, so I'm a bassist. So um, I don't have any in this office. They're all in in the room next door, or, or I'd, I'd I'd have it up for you in my it's my old home in California. I used to have one hanging over the wall, and nice. I had an amp upstairs. I, I my goal was to have a bass in every room and amp. That's you know, <laughs> but never far. Like, no so matter well. where you were, it was never far away. It was within. No matter three. where you are. It, in, in the home. Yeah. I haven't been able to fulfill that mission here yet now, but well, uh, what, what about your, what about um, like your children? Do they play instruments as well? 
they're showing they, they've been so we had a little little bit of a studio that was set up in california so had drums uh keys my basses, different things like that um, so my son, he's only five, but he is been showing a lot of interest in drums and he actually used to be able to hold feet pretty decently. So we've still been kind of messing around with that. He'll, I got him a set of sticks here and I, I, I've just been trying to get him like play rhythms just on the bed or, or different things like that or on the sticks and patterns and stuff. And he's been showing interest on that. And my daughter has started exploring the piano as well. And they're starting to, the bases are bigger but they're starting to show interest in just going and, you know, slapping them around a little bit, but they're not they're too big to, for them to hold. So I've actually thought of getting a, a smaller acoustic that I can play if we're just going out in nature, which is something. Yeah, like travel. Family. A little traveler, exactly. But then it'll be a perfect size for them yep. to play because they're showing interest in that also. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Like, honestly, it's, it's really great that – that your kids are showing that tenacity, sort of that interest in music already. Cause at the, at an early age, I mean, if they stick with it, they're just going to be really good uh, towards later in life. But I also think that I know actually that the musical side of the brain part that helps you interpret and be creative and actually create things in a different, we're using a different sense. Uh, it's such a good break from the day, whatever they end up doing work-wise, they'll always be able to break away and, and play a little bit of music and help them relax and uh, yeah. and, and they'll have that and they'll, they'll say, oh yeah, I remember when we used to play on the beach in Barbados, you know, with the family. Yeah, very, very much so. And that's, that, that's part of what we're really looking at, um, giving them in their experience here, just really wanted to focus on the human connection elements, the creativity that comes um, as well from just being outside uh, a, a little bit more and 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 kind of going through that um, that whole process. So that that's definitely been a part of it, the the musical elements. But even though I've played music for many many years, we've tried to give them the opportunity to go and to explore, but not forcing them to where it feels like it's a burden. It's it's coming from a place of like they want to do it as opposed to they have to do it. And then if they want to explore and we want to go a little deeper, then then we can. And they're starting to show more and more signs some days more than others. But it's not a it's not a forced thing that we, we have to do. We're just trying to get them exposed. Yeah. No, it's like uh, so I, I once heard a podcast with Naveen Jain who said <laughs> is talked about talked about how to teach your children things like this. And he said, look, it's not a lot. It's not about leading a horse to water and forcing them to drink. It's about how do you make the horse thirsty? And it's exactly the same thing with your kids. How do you, how do you garnish and, and cultivate that interest within them so that they go and pursue it themselves on their own volition instead of you just pushing it on them all the time? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's, that's incredibly important um, perspective. And to add to that, I think a big part of that, you know, we, we, a lot of times we talk about what are we doing? How are we doing it? Daniel Pink released the book a few years ago called When. It's an incredible book that gets into the timing and understanding your own biological clocks of how do we work and how we might be on different cycles with our timing of when we're most creative, most productive, different things like that. What sometimes can get overlooked is where, right? Where are we doing the work? The environment that we create. I know like right now I'm in my office and I can get a lot done and checked off the list in my office. I also know when I need a creative spark, I need to change things up a little bit. Sometimes just going sitting outside on the, on the porch, like you're doing right now in your interview, that gives my mind a very different perspective because of the interactions I might be having. Just hearing the wind blowing through, like blowing the leaves along that, that might be it, you know, or if, even if I, you know, I, before pre COVID, I used to travel a lot for work. Even if I'm in the heart of New York city, I could find that juxtaposition of the sound of the city and underneath that, this just the sounds of nature that are flowing through to create this symphony of sound that we're going through. But those little, little pieces, you know, we call it white noise and di different elements like that. But those little pieces or the smells or, or just being in those different environments that wear can completely shift what's firing through up here. And when you change 
what's firing up here, where your thoughts go, your energy flows. And that that's a big part of what I've personally tried to spend time working to better understand about myself and trying different things to, to see how I can get different parts of my mind firing. And that can be in where I'm doing the work or even what I did before I'm doing the work, right? I might, I might play, if I'm preparing for a talk, for instance, this last thing I'll say um, on uh, about this right now is when I'm preparing for a big talk, one of the things that has to mirror that is bass playing, interestingly enough, because it's the same portion of my mind for sharing, for performing, for engaging that I've been conditioning for decades now as a bassist, performing you know, on, on, on different stages and, and different elements. So it takes me to the same place of what I need to do. Reminding me, Josh, that it's, it's not about me and it was never about me, it's about them. And I need to pay attention to who my audience is and be hyper vigilant about reading them while also having the creativity to flow and to jump and to improvise through if needed to get get people to where they need to be to meet them where they're actually at Dude, it's a it's a learned skill you know it's not something that comes naturally you I, i'm glad that you brought this up because it it really is there is an art to that it's like um you know to continue with the musical analogies right it's, it really is like playing the piano in my mind where where it takes a while for you to understand how to control each one of your hands individually and have them work harmoniously to create something great. It's the same way. I mean, even with these conversations on Fire Builders Live, uh, you're doing the exact same thing. You can't see the audience, but you read the comments, right? You're constantly thinking about what's being said and how it's being interpreted by the audience. And at the same time, you're actively listening to the person speaking. And then you're also trying to plan out where you're going to go with the conversation and how you're going to loop back to the nucleus of it all. So, man, I, I totally feel you on that. Uh, I am curious, yeah. though, where you draw the line between, between, for instance, working outside, because I'm the same way. I love it. Where is it important for me? Like right now, I'm, I'm sitting here on this porch barefoot, uh, and I love it. But that also when you when you move out of say an office and you move out into you know working on a hammock somewhere in a park or wherever you lose a little bit of utility as well right it's a little bit harder to get internet access and to see the screen and, and stuff like that and so it's a it's a balance between between feeling creative and being in a creative place but then also having the ability to execute on that creativity technically. So I'm curious as to where you where you find that. Yeah, you, you know, one, one of the things that really stands out as a great question is simplifying. So what do I mean by that? What I'm getting at is when I'm going to that where, when I've decided I'm going outside, I actually will be very specific on what it is I'm targeting doing. So basically I'm asking myself, what does my mind need to, to, to have to be successful? Where do I want it to be? And then I get into to the how and the what I plan on focusing. So I almost map that stuff out before. So that way I don't set unrealistic expectations. And then if other stuff comes as a result of that, then great. But I'm not expecting any of that. So it actually helps me to um, really, uh, uh, my friend Mike Vardy, he's he's the host of the Productivityist podcast. I was on there. I've interviewed him on my show, Nature Advantage. Brilliant, brilliant gentleman. Absolutely. And you would think he's a just well-known productivity guru. And what he says is productivity is not about productivity. And you're just like, what? What are you talking about? And he gets into some of these nuances. And one of the key terminologies he presents, and, and he talked about on my show on Nature Advantage, was this notion of time crafting. Stop trying to aim at everything and just craft your time of what are you doing in this block and, and, and crafting that and being okay with that, being okay with what you're not doing. Because so often, and, and this applies with just singular focused work, and this applies in our life. So often, Josh, we get caught up with, well, I'm not, I, I'm working, I'm doing my work, 
And then I'm thinking about, oh, I'm working too much. I should be spending time with them. Then I'm, then you're spending time with family and you're like, I should really be do, doing work. Right? Feel a and lot it, of guilt, a lot of guilt there. It's, it's a vicious cycle. And the whole thing that you realize is you're never actually present in anything that you're doing and you're not doing anything well, right? I've, I've in full confession here, I've been there. I've been there in a lot, 2020 in gearing up for the move and in everything that our company went through to ride through that season and to come out and to continue to be able to serve our um, our clients and, and strengthen our business as, as we've gone through that. Um, I lived in that space because I was, I was home far more. I wasn't on airplanes, but I had also felt more disconnected because I was just, I had so much I was doing with work. So what became comforting was when you're doing whatever it is you're doing, do it wholeheartedly. And when you're not doing it, do that other activity just wholeheartedly. And the only person that can grant you that position, uh, permission is you. And it takes practice. And here's a little micro way of practicing that. I told I told you, Josh, we started off with the, the mornings, right? I give myself permission to wake up early to invest in myself. Not invest in myself so it's all about me. It's to invest in me so I can give to we. So I can be in the right energy state that I need to bring for other people. But you might be a lot of people might be thinking you give yourself permission to wake up early. I give myself permission to sleep in. You can do that as well. <laughs> I give myself permission to wake up early and to protect that time. My team knows uh, it, it 34 strong when I was when I was living in California. I might be up then. They knew I was an early riser. But don't bother reaching out, trying to call, trying to text. I'm not going to respond because I didn't have my phone or anything around me. That was my time to do the work. And when we're giving our per per permission, you don't have to get up early. I'm not telling everybody you got to get up early. But whatever it is, give yourself permission to do one little thing for yourself that you love. If it's if it if you're like I just need two minutes to take take a breath in the middle of, of my work to step away from my computer desk, do that and be okay with that. And see if you can let go of some of that guilt. Because all we have to do is build these little micro habits. And that's where the real change starts to happen. A lot of people have looked at us like, oh, I, I can't move my family to Barbados. Well, we couldn't have moved our family to Barbados 10 years ago. And it, it, it hasn't been this one monumental event that led to that. It's been a series of habitual little shifts and choices that we've made when you aimed at something Pretty, pretty large, pretty significant. And instead of saying, why me? Asking the question, why not me? Or why not us? Somebody else is doing it. Why can't we do it? Exactly. Well, I, I wonder if, or I wonder how, and there's nothing wrong with thinking about it. You're, you're not going to get crushed for thinking about these things. So you got to give yourself permission to think about those things first. Anything great that's happened in, in humanity was always a result of somebody's thought first. Are you finding that your kids, because I'm sure you're teaching this concept to your children, uh, are you finding that one, that it's a little bit more difficult for them because they're growing up in an age where you're just constantly multitasking, you're connected so many to so many things simultaneously, and is Barbados helping? Because I'm sure that it is. Um, so one of the big reasons we moved here, Josh, was for that, the answer, the answer to that question is yes, it's a challenge, the second answer to that question is it has become far easier to teach them about just being present and living here. That was one of the things that we've loved about here is people do have the time to stop, to have the conversation. Um, you know, these magical devices, phones and stuff, they're here. They're, they're, they're things that we're going to have. But the ability to just disconnect from that and just be fully present. Is, is far greater. We've, we've noticed a lot of times at restaurants when kids are out, when we were in this, the, the US, um, it was easy in that environment to just, you'd go out to a restaurant, you'd eat, and people people's kids would be glued to a screen. We always, and listen, all, all respect, if that's what works for your family, amazing, go for it. For our family, Lisa and I always said, we're, ne we're not going to do that for them. They're going to sit. We're going to have a meal. Sometimes there might be battles. Sometimes 
we've got as a family, we're like, it would be so much easier to give them a screen. I can't argue with that. It would have been easier to have given them a screen at times, but we never allowed that for ourselves because we wanted to make sure that we work through what it was like to be connected. And sometimes you have good days. Sometimes you have bad days. Sometimes they ask you for something, you give it to them and then they cry about because you gave them what they wanted. And you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> Isn't that what you asked for? Like you, you, you asked for the chicken nuggets. Like what, what's the issue? You know, whatever it might be to, to the parents out there, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, here, what we've noticed, just using that restaurant example, I haven't, I haven't been out yet to where I've seen a family out or people out with kids and the kids are just stacked on a device. Kids are out, they're interacting, they're sitting at the table, they're walking around, checking out the restaurant, going through, and there's far more of a vibe that seems to allow for that. My whole point here is the environment here has not normalized that. So it becomes less of a, well, dad, how come that kid gets to be on their iPad? Yeah. What, less of those pieces. So the normalization environmentally, I'm not saying it doesn't happen here. I'm just saying we haven't seen as much of that. That is not the norm when people are, are at dinner. I, and I, and you know, I've, I have seen people at dinner where, where they're on their phones kind of going through, but you see far less of that on the kid's side. And when, when we've been around, you, you, you've seen there's, there's there's been that people that we've met locally here from the island and even other expats that we've met from the U.S., from Canada, from, from England, other parts of the world. That seems to be what they also want for their kids. So guess what you're seeing? You're seeing the normalization of let's let's not go go get on that screen. Let's actually we can eat. You know, if the adults are eating here yeah. and, and we're sitting by the beach and the kids want to go run and play or there's a play structure. Go do that. Yeah. Just be a kid. Go be creative. Come up with the craziest ideas you can. <laughs> develop whatever games you want out of that. Somebody had to develop the games on on the apps or wherever. But what 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 could be? What, how can creativity fuel that by not spending time on that? And, and I think that's what we're getting at, Josh. Is how not focusing on some of those pieces can actually help you. If that is ultimately where you want to focus on, I, I think technology is incredible. We're having this conversation now across land and sea um, because of technology. It's absolutely amazing, but we have to use it effectively and really think of that where question also. Well, which funny enough, from what I understand, Barbados has one of the fastest internet speeds in all of the Caribbean as a as an average as a whole. And uh, but I totally one hundred percent agree. And and it's like that point of comparison, like you said, it, it hasn't normalized over there yet. You know, for for like for you and me, right? So I'm 40, and I'm I just read an article. Yeah, so so I so I just read an article about us. You know, people that were born from 80 to 85 are in this weird generation where we we were young enough to grow up without any devices, but then we saw the transition and we were. Um, you know, we were we were introduced to that at an older, more mature age, so that we could balance those two things. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I am so incredibly thankful and grateful for that. In retrospect, but uh, but just like you said, you know, a lot of the creativity, a lot of the ideas that you have, they came not necessarily from being connected to my phone and tethered to it all the time, but by being out in the world and experiencing things with all of your senses picking up rocks and searching for fish and, you know, and doing all of those things, dude, I think it, it had an absolute effect on who I am as a person today. You know, I, I, I really appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, one of the things that's so interesting, you hear so often with kids, uh, with even in, in the workplace, we just focus more. You just need to focus. How do you focus when you ding, ding, Boom, all, all these different things. We're just getting yeah. bombarded. How do you condition that? Focus is a muscle. A bicep is a muscle. Focus is a muscle, and it's a talent. And if we're not practicing it, we're practicing being focused on being distracted. 
because we've chosen to allow those things in. So yeah, we have a lot of focus. We focus on being distracted of all the dings, the pings and, and, and notifications that we're getting in all these areas and we're being bombarded with it. So how do you actually create spaces where you can condition the muscle of singularly focusing and really taking something in that will also show up when you're working or when you're studying for that exam for our youth, right? I give you an example that, that's amazing. So mornings we might go out for a swim, Josh. My daughter has been doing incredible in the water. She She's eight right now. And when we first went out, she would just be flying through the water, just moving quick, looking. And I've told her, I said, "Hun, when you slow down and you just look around, you go over the exact same spot that you went through and all of a sudden there's life there that you didn't even know was there. But you gotta actually slow down. And she's taking that to heart without telling me that. And she's seeing, like, for those of you that are familiar with, with some of the different different fish species, there's, there, there's these element, there, there's scorpion fish. And they sit right on a rock, and you can barely tell that they're there. I, I just give that as an example. It, they look like part of the rock. They blend right into it. Her ability now, she would have missed all of them in the past. She swims over, and she's pointing out stuff to me. I, I used to be like, stop. Take a look. That's something that's there. Or take a look. There's actually an eel that's right over that rock that you didn't see. You, you have to pay attention. There, there, there's a spotted moray that's that's right in there and seeing that. And you know all I'm doing, Josh? We're spending time in nature. We're getting charged. You talk about being barefoot outside. We're getting the electricity of the earth and the energy of the earth that feeds, that grows trees, grows giant sequoia trees. And we as, we as humans, what do we do? We wear shoes and disconnect from the earth, right? But so Isn't there, somebody the was just mentioning that to me. Isn't there a whole book written about that? Something called okay. Grounded, I think. Grounded, absolutely. Yeah. Grounding, earthing, that whole process, that's exactly what it is. We, as a species, in wearing shoes and wearing different things, we're losing some of the natural electrical components here um, that that the, 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 the earth naturally brings to us, right? So when we're in the water, that story with my daughter, when we're in the water, we're getting charged, getting that up energy, and we're conditioning what? Focus, not distracted focus. And when you're in the water and you're swimming, you've got two things you can do. Keep breathing, make sure you're not burning yourself out, and just enjoy what's right there and take a look around. And that's what we're, we're, we're having happen. And we're doing that as a family. We're doing that, or some days it's just one-to-one -one with, with me and my daughter. And you know how much, I mean, you're, you're a water guy, man. You grew up on the water. It's really, really interesting in, in, in kind of thinking about that. So, you know, that, that, that's what it is. We, I, 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 I love it. And somebody said here, we are focused on being distracted. Sounds like a great title of a book that educates about strengthening the mind muscle. I, I love that. Thank, thank you, Sterling. There you go. Yeah, that's, no, it's, it's true. I, I I've never heard of my TEDx talk. I don't know. I'm doing <laughs> prep on that this afternoon. I love it. I, I, I didn't even catch that piece there, but maybe I'll have to see if that falls in because it's right in line with what I'm getting to. Well, so this brings me then to my question. Uh, actually, hold on. Before we get that, let me pull up what Lyndon just said. So, Darren, we need to get into a Barbados state of mind. Uh, forget New York City. Sounds like someplace I want to be. What made you actually choose Barbados? Yeah, um, Lyndon, a couple of things. I'll give you the short answer, and I will also tell you our family journey. Um, you can follow, you can actually check it out on uh, on YouTube. It's the, we are the Flip the Script family. Um, you can kind of see the logo right there. That's, that's who we are. We're the Flip the Script family. We chose Barbados and that was actually not where we chose originally. In 2019, we decided on St. Martin because we had just come back from St. Martin. And when COVID actually hit in March of last year, that week that everything really hit in the beginning of March in California, my wife and I were supposed to be in St. Martin, scouting places, figuring everything out. Now, for me personally, I'm really happy. I worked out for Barbados because if I had to pick back in 2019, I would pick Barbados because I'd been here a bunch. I had, we have some friends here. We've, we've known some, some folks that are here. I've, I'd been here a few times and in 2018, we came here as a family. What happened was Barbados then last summer opened up the welcome stamp, the welcome stamp that made it very easy for people to uh, that can work remote um, to actually 
come down here and be here Smart. for a year. So we're here on a year long visa, but you can renew it and there's some other elements and, and it works out great for Barbados in the context of you're bringing people down here, they're, you know, they're making their income from their home country and they're now investing it back in, in your economy. So that was, was where it was at. We had some connections here that just made it also a lot easier. Um, and I've personally just loved the island. I'm a scuba diver. I would gotten certified here back in uh, 2003. And I just spoke to one of the guys that certified me as an instructor. Like we've been in touch for you know 20 years uh, still. So that, that was part of it. And um, yeah. And, 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 and if you do find the link on, uh, on, on YouTube, that tells a little bit of our story of even before we left for here, um, it gives a little narrative on that. It'll tell you a story of what it was like living through a volcanic ash fall from the St. Vincent eruption that took place about a month ago um, and then blew the ash cloud directly at Barbados. They had it much worse than St. Vincent, um, but we we documented, we've just been documenting what it's like living here, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. Dude, that's so awesome. And by the way, so Lyndon says that she found it. I also put the uh, a clickable link in the description of this whole thing. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's in the podcast description. So you can click that and it'll take you right to that YouTube channel, Flip Your Script Family. Uh, Darren, I question for you, because I like to ask this to everybody. You're doing a lot with your family down there, being outside, getting in touch with nature, teaching about focus, right? So let's, let's play off of that focus theme a little bit. And I'm curious as to what you would say with this. If you could suggest, like people, people like this concept, they really do, and they want to just get started with it. Um, they want to transition from not doing anything right now to, to achieving that type of focus, even if they can't go to some place like Barbados. Where would you have them start? What would be something that's small that they could do on a consistent basis? Yeah, the sim simplest thing that I can say, um, and I'm very, very passionate about this, is collaborate with nature. Collaborate with nature. What do I mean by that? Regardless of if, where you live, whether you're in Barbados, like my family is, or whether you're in New York City, go outside, look up, take a breath of air, see what you can notice. Look at the little things. Pay attention to uh, just the, the, the way that a, a wasp not, might look, like the perfection of, of its body with, with the, the, the stinger and everything that's there. When you start noticing these little things, you can get your, your mind to a state of wonder. So one of the things that I get into, right, there's a, been a lot more research here recently, Josh, on nature as a healing element, as therapy, as fixing us when we're broken and we need it from that lens. In the Nature Advantage, my podcast, and this is actually at the core of what I'll be speaking of in my TEDx talk coming up in August in California, what, uh, what we actually get into looking at there is I actually talk to people that we would look in at and we would say, wow, they're really doing something incredible with their life. They are making an impact on humanity. They're, they're, they're doing something meaningful. They folded it into their companies whatever it might be. So I've had the privilege of talking to Grammy Award winning musicians like many of the Wooten brothers. For those of you that are familiar with Victor Wooten, iconic bass player is a dear friend of mine. Um, I've talked to Joseph McClendon. He's the uh, he's Tony Robbins. He he's works with Tony Robbins and has for, for many, many years. He, he's been on the show. We've talked to Wall Street Journal bestselling authors like Mike Michalowicz. And what we're getting at is not how nature is healing you, but actually how they spend time in nature intentionally and by design to advance themselves, to push themselves into the next level and have no idea where their time in nature is going to lead them. A quick example of this, Josh, um, Mike Michalowicz, he's the author of books for, for you business owners out there, books like Profit First, Clockwork, Fix This Next. Um, so many. If you actually read his books, The Pumpkin Plan, some people have heard of that, or The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. So outside of The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, let's let's put that one aside. All of the other books actually are rooted in biomimicry. His book, Clockwork, what ended up happening is he was gardening one day, right? So he's out in the garden with his family, right? And all of a sudden, his neck is just ringing. He's like, oh my gosh, this really hurts. And so he looks up and he realizes there's this massive beehive 
that's right above him and he and he bolts into the house he's taking care of it and and that's when he has that realization and guess what everybody that was it for him his whole concept of clockwork as he, as he said a week ago that wasn't there what is how is it possible to grow something that big and that powerful in such a short period of time they have to have created some systems and clockwork so after the bee stung him in, in in gardening, that is the foundation of one of his books, Clockwork. That was like the crystallization seed, you know? That but Exactly. The, the queen bee role is what he actually de designed and, and, and talks about in that book as the role that we have to protect at all costs for the business. And it doesn't have to be the owner's role. It doesn't have to be the CEO. It doesn't have to be the title. It's what's the role in identifying that is the, that is the key to make this grow continuously. The queen bee, their role is to make sure that they're laying as many eggs as possible, right? And, and growing so the hive can grow on scale. That's what he uses as the analogy, but it was because of being out in nature, doing something that he's always loved, that he came up with that idea. And you can go through all of his books and there's something like that that's hidden in every single one. So that's just an example of how being intentional can actually help us to create the impact that we want but shutting our mind down is the hard part, Josh, because we have to get our mind to a place of where we're willing to accept that today we might not get that beasting. We might not have that epiphany, but we're going to keep going back out and trust that when it's meant to happen, it will. And we'll, we'll be glad exactly what we need. I'm glad that you mentioned that because that is, I think, a very important distinction that, that we should make for everybody listening. When you say intentional, you don't mean necessarily intentional about the outcome. It no. is going. It is intentional about the process. Yeah. 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 So, exactly. So the one thing again to reiterate that becomes: put yourself in a position where you can step outside, or if you can't step outside, if it's if, if it's crazy and you're you're travel. I had several days in the past where I was airport and you're you're in tin cans for multiple hours, right? And you're just flying around. But notice, take a look at the window, see the sunset, and just. Give yourself the minute or two to look at that and just take it in. Look at the perfection of a tree and see the leaves. How are they all the same? How, how does a giant sequoia come from a seed that that's, lives in here? A giant sequoia seed, for those of you that have seen them, they're amongst the eldest living organisms on the planet. And the seeds that come from this cone right here are about the size of a grain of oat. How does that happen? How does, how does that happen? And when we pause for nature, it's always there to collaborate with us. And if you think back through humanity, Josh, the more uh, connect over time, so many huge breakthroughs for humanity have come from time in nature, right? It's come from like human flight. How do we figure it out? Well, we, we had to study the birds. How did Velcro get invented? Well, a guy went on a walk. And then stuff stuck to his dog. And he's like, we could have something here. I was going to say, I was definitely going to say aliens. Definitely. But... Yeah. <laughs> Velcro. Well, yeah. They had a hand in Velcro. <laughs> there's, there's other elements like that. But yeah, but the, but the nature component, um, it's always there. It's always ready. It's always willing. And it's always able. And as the, as yeah. the student goes, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear. That's 100 100 i like i'm so on board with the the biomimicry idea in fact you know linden here said darren i love this you're speaking my language well um what you probably don't know about linden is that she uh is a a professional mermaid and she has created her own line of monofins that uses biomimicry to improve the efficiency of propelling of underwater and it's it's the exact same it's the exact same concept i also used to work uh well, I almost got a job at a company called Festo back in the mechanical engineering days, and they were an automotive company creating all of these advancements in automotive technology. And their primary, their primary motivation and the, their creative bleeding edge stuff was all biomimicry. So they would mm -hmm. create the most amazing, like, like biomechanical stingrays that would use helium and swim just like regular stingrays swim through like any fluid water 
right? But do it would do it through the air and it would mimic the same motions. Mm -hmm. you know, and they and they did that not to say, oh, we're gonna use like stingray technology in cars, but the insights that you learn from the process of biomimicry, they did use in all of these new breakthroughs in the automotive tech world. So yeah, man, I know you're spot on with all that. Absolutely. And 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 here's the thing, like for everybody, you, you might be listening, you might be thinking, well, I'm not gonna go design a, a flying stingray or I'm not gonna go design Velcro. That's not what it's about. It's about what's inside of you that needs to be unleashed that we can give ourselves a chance to unleash. Again, that if, if there's all that potential in this seed, um, since we talked about Vic, I'll, I'll, I'll just give a shout out to Mama Wooten who, who taught him lessons many, many, for, for many, many moons. His, his mom, she's, she's, she's been passed now for, for several years, but she would always ask him as a little boy, simple question. She, she, she'd look at this seed and she'd say, boy, she goes, look at all this potential that's in that seed. Like, you see that tree? You see that apple tree? You see that oak tree? There's all of that was came from this tiny little seedling, from this little acorn if you're looking at, a, at an oak tree. And then all she'd ask him, Josh, is, well, then what do you think's inside of you? If all that time was spent on that little seedling, what do you think is inside of you? And if that seedling can have that potential released by spending time in nature, where do you think you need to spend a little time? Damn straight, man. That's a really great point. I, yeah, I, huh. Yeah, I tell you, man, I think it reminds me a little bit. There's a quote, didn't Einstein basically said, everything everything that you would ever want to know as far as how, and I'm totally paraphrasing this, but yeah. you know, when, you, when you come up with solutions to problems, there's only two places to look, either nature or the human body. And, and I think it's very much like similar to what you're saying in a sense that, that t time is the ingredient here. And so you when you set that intention to be outside, you can't necessarily say, all right, like I just need to get my outside fix, get that done and then come back in and do my thing. Right. And expect that that's going to make a difference. I feel that just spending quality time outside without any, without any expectation of a big breakthrough happening, but letting the process evolve naturally yeah. with time. That's the key. It, it, it really is, you know, and, and, uh, my, a colleague of mine that I work with very, very frequently, a gentleman named Alejandro Bodipo Memba, he's a founder of a company called OVP, OVP Management Consulting. He often uses the analogy, he's also does CrossFit and different things. And what, what he talks about is time under tension for building muscles, but also as, as a way in going through nature doesn't have to be time under tension. And what we get into in the Nature Advantage when I'm on that show is everybody can have a very different way and a di very different habit that they've figured out of how they're stepping into that collaboration, how they're giving themselves that permission. Me, I love the water. So, and I love putting my feet in the sand and I love going for hikes and doing all those different elements, but um, people will have different ways of doing that. And that, that, that is what Josh became so fascinating to me was there's, there's not this prescription of you do it this way, like Vic, He's an animal tracker. He gets into animal tracking. Mike Michalowicz, he goes for walks on the same trail every day or does gardening or does different elements. And we find that some people have these really big intentional pieces they do. And then others just talk about these micro little things that you would miss, just like my daughter used to miss the scorpion fish on the reef if you weren't actually in tune with, oh, yeah, that's actually something I could look at because it's easy to get stuck in the mindset of I'm in an urban environment. I don't have I don't have access to that, but maybe it's actually still there if you open your mind up to it. And once we open to that level, what does that reveal on the next phase? What else does that allow in when we've actually removed a limit that we didn't re realize was a limit and that we hadn't even framed or couldn't have necessarily framed as a self-imposing limit that we were putting on our thinking? Dude, I wish that we could, I feel like we're just scratching the surface. I wish that we could take another hour and talk about this stuff because uh, uh, it's fascinating, man. By the way, like before, because uh, I, I want to talk about 
what you what you're up to now the upcoming ted talk right a little bit more about the youtube channel but just quick question for you with this pursuit that you have of appreciating the nuance of things i'm just curious if you've spent any time in japan not yet not yet it's it's definitely a place that has has been an, a, a location i would love to get to um have not have actually been to i have not crossed the pacific beyond just getting to hawaii that's the furthest that i've, I've gone in, in in that direction it is a place I would love to go. The martial arts that I have studied are Japanese based. So um, definitely have learned little bits and pieces about it. Um, and, and, and some really, really close family friends are Japanese uh, as well. So you've spent well, some time there. Uh, actually not too much, but I've read a lot. I spent a little bit of time in Tokyo, but the I think that if you ever do some kind of retreat around this topic of appreciating nature, man, I think doing it in Japan, you let me know if that happens and I will be there because I think that's a, because I think it just, it just syncs up so incredibly well with what you're referring to right now, what you're talking about, the ideals. Um, so that said, dude, this was incredible. Let's talk a little bit about what you got going on. People want to continue the conversation. They want to ask you some questions. They want to find out more about the vlog. Uh, tell everybody what you got going on and how they can connect with you. Yeah, so a couple, couple of different areas. I'm pretty accessible. You can feel free to reach out to me. I am on Instagram, just Darren Verasami. Um, you can find it there. You can also find um, us at the Flip the Script family, and, and that'll be, again, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, those locations. You, you can find us there. And then on YouTube for the Flip the Script family. So that's logging our family journey that we have here. Um, and then the other area, if you want to learn more about what we're doing with organizational culture and uh, on, on the business side with 34 Strong, you can find out more about that in our Leading Strong podcast that we host there at 34strong.com. And on the Nature Advantage side, if that's stuck with you, you can, you can connect at natureadvantageshow.com or just type in Nature Advantage and the podcast will show up there. Um, and that is going to be at the core of what I am discussing in my TEDx talk, going through the process of developing that right now. And that's that's a big piece of what's coming up. Uh, just much of what we, we spoke of here and even how we've, we've really put our money where our mouth is and bringing our family uh, together to really live in this nature, nature experience as well. Um, and on the connectivity side and what we're capturing in uh, the Flip the Script family journey. So those are some ways, and I'd love to hear from you. I always, I, again, as Josh said, I love connecting with people, hearing hearing about you, hearing hearing about different elements like that. So that's going to be something you can you can find out there. If you're a uh, if you're a nature lover or you're wanting to kind of start looking at your own vision for the future, I'm actually one of the the facilitators as well with Victor Wooten for his camps. He has um, we have a, we have a camp that we're doing together coming up in June called the Future. Vision Camp. So you can actually find out about that at vixcamps.com and that's vixcamps.com. So a lot of different things that are going on. That's for musicians and non-musicians alike. That's coming up in June. So a lot on the radar between yeah. now and August and I've got to fly back to the US sometime in there as well. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, all awesome. Seriously, congratulations on the TEDx talk. Like, uh, uh, I mean, I know you're just going to crush it, especially with this theme, because it just inherently <clears throat> connects with people. It is the common thread between everyone, connecting everyone, that idea of nature. And and I'll tell you, I also, as you were talking, I really do. I should get you and Lyndon in touch, because I think you guys will have an incredible overlap with, uh, with the kind of stuff that she's doing, too. So I will make sure that, that happens. And man... Thanks. My, my uh, daughter will love that, Lyndon, if you're still on also, because if you watch any of our videos, she actually believes that she's a mermaid. So you will see her swimming with her double fins on, but the whole concept of a monofin, she's seen it. And she's like, that could be cool. So She is going to we'll flip see. out. She will flip out with this. It is, uh, it's incredible. <laughs> Lyndon saying she's yes. there. Yes, please. All right. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we see that. That's, that's super cool. Uh, dude. This was so great. Um, 
So thank you again. I know you're a busy man. And uh, I just want to say, I really thought this conversation was incredible. So I really appreciate the time today, Darren. Thank you. Josh, thank you for what you're doing in the world and for the impact that you are working to make. Uh, it was an honor to be here and thoroughly enjoyed our time. Yeah, same here. And also here, let me just throw this up because Linda just said she's getting a monofin. So we'll connect offline, figure out where to send it. I mean, you're getting so well known there in Barbados. Maybe we just address it to Barbados and they'll know exactly where to go. They'll know. They'll, they'll, know. they'll say, hey, these, yeah, who knows? We'll see. So, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll talk offline. Cool. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in. Another episode of Fire Builders Live. Remember, we stream live twice a week, Wednesdays, Fridays, 12 noon Eastern. Come join us for another episode. This is Josh, Darren, and Elvis the Rooster, who is somewhere floating around here. Uh, we are signing off another episode. Darren, thanks again. This was so great. Thank you, Josh. All right, guys. Have a great day. Adios.